Welcome everyone on another video of how to build a CI CD pipeline for microservices and serverless function in AWS. In this video, we'll get our hands dirty and build our VPC on which our CI CD pipeline will be deployed using infrastructure as code tools. So, before I jump into the terminal session, let me explain briefly what is infrastructure as code why people use it and how Terraform can be used to create resources and AWS. So Terraform is an open source project written in Go. It was created to automate the provisioning of resources on the cloud. It supports multiple cloud providers like AWS, Azure, Google Cloud Platform, and others. It allows you to create manage and update infrastructure resources through declarative configuration files. So basically you describe the infrastructure you want to build and template files and then Terraform will parse those files and transform them to API calls to your cloud provider to create the needed resources. So by doing so, you can version your infrastructure state and a Git repository and track all the changes. So you can do code review and rollback in case of failure the same way you are manipulating any other code. Additionally, you can use the same blueprint to create multiple replicas of the same environment easily. So I think by now you should be familiar on how Terraform works and the benefits of using infrastructure as code tools. So let's see how we can configure Terraform to create some resources. So point your browser to the following URL, which I will be posting with the video's resources and find the appropriate package for your system and download it. So for myself, I'm using Mac. So I already downloaded the Mac OS version. So once downloaded, you need to unzip the file using the following command. And then we'll save the output to this following that on, on our machine. Next, we need to add the execution permission to this binary by using search mode command. So by now, Terraform should be installed, so we can verify this by typing Terraform hyphen version. And as you can see, at the moment of recording this video, I'm using Terraform version 0.11 so now Terraform is working as expected so need now we need to give it access to our AWS account in order to create resources on our behalf so to do so we create a new IAM user so sign up to the AWS management council and navigate to identity and access management Then create a new user. Let's call it Terraform, which will have programmatic access. So you can either create a custom policy with the right permissions, which is recommended for security purposes, or for the sake of this demo, I'm just gonna give it access to EC2. So I will give it EC2 for access permission. I will click on create user and AWS will generate automatically uh, the credential for this user. So now we need to store this credential on a local file named credentials and a folder named .aws and my home directory as follows. So I will open a new terminal session and I will jump to this file which is located on my workspace and .aws folder and then here I need to set the AWS region that I want to use, which will be London. And then I will copy the credential that was generated for the user and paste them on this file. So now Terraform should have access to create AC2 instances. So let's test it out by creating our first AWS resources using Terraform. 
So open your favorite code editor and create a new file with the following content. So first we will need to define the provider. So the provider in this case will be AWS. And we need to define the region on which we want to create our resources. So the region will be London. Next we need to define the path to the credentials file. that we already defined earlier. And we need to set the profile to be the default one. So now we defined the credential part. So now we are ready to create our AC2 instances. So to do so, we can go to this URL that I show with Oreo and click on documentation from the navigation bar click on providers and select AWS so here you have all the available resources that you can create with Terraform so for this example we want to create an EC2 instance so I will click on AWS underscore instance and I will have an example of the code that I need to write in order to create an EC2 instance. So I will copy this code and paste it on my file. Here I can override the values of the variables. So for example, for the AMI that will be used, I will use the Amazon Linux AMI. And to retrieve the value of this AMI, I will go back to the EC2 dashboard. and I will try to launch a new instance so here we can for example take the Amazon Linux AMI ID and I will copy it here so for the instance type so we can stick with the t2.micro and for the tags so you, here you can specify some metadata for your instance so for example here I will change the name of my instance to be demo. So now on the terminal I will run the Terraform init command and this command will download and install the AWS provider. Once done you need to type Terraform play command. It will generate an execution plan. So it will show you things that will be created in advance which is a good thing for debugging and also to ensure that you are not doing anything wrong so for this example we can see that we will create an EC2 instance in the London region so when you are ready you can go ahead and apply these changes by painter from apply command so we can confirm the configuration by typing yes and Terraform will create the AC2 instance. So now if you go back to the AWS Management Console and refresh this page, we should have our instance running. So as you can see so far we defined the AWS region and the AWS instance properties and the template file. However, one of the reasons we use infrastructure as good tools is for usability and automation and so you should always use variables and, and avoid hard coding values that's why Terraform allows you to define your own variables so to do so we will create a new file so this file will be called variables and here we will define a set of variables so for example we will define the AWS region as a variable and we will set a default value to be the London region. We will also define the instance type and we can also set a default value for this for this variable. Now you can go back to the main file and update it to use variables instead of hard coded values. So we will start with the AWS region and here we will use 
to the region variables and we will do the same for the instance type now if you run terraform apply command so as you can see terraform will track the changes using the terraform state file that will be that was generated the first time we executed terraform apply command and then it will compare the infrastructure state that was stored on this file with the current state so if terraform detect that there is a new changes it will shows you this on the terraform plane output command and as you can see here we didn't change the values of the properties of our EC2 instances as there is no changes so now you are familiar on how Terraform basic commands works and how you can use variables and templates file so let's take this folder and create our virtual private cloud on which our CI CD stack will be deployed so the VPC we will build is described in the following diagram it will have two public and two pu private subnets spin up and two availability zones for resiliency and two road tables a private road table will be assigned to the private subnets which will route the internet traffic to a NAT instance and the public road table will be assigned to the public subnets which will route the internet traffic directly to the internet gateway so for the implementation part I have opted to split the configuration into multiple files by what they do which makes it much easier to track the changes so first of all I have defined a file called Terraform which contains the AWS provider configuration plus the backend configuration so if you remember when we were building our EC2 instance with Terraform our state file was generated locally in the .terraform directory the state file contains information about the infrastructure and configuration that Terraform is managing when working on a team it's better to store this file remotely so that more folks can access it to make changes to the infrastructure plus for security it's recommended to store this file on an encrypted backend like an S3 bucket because it might contain sensitive information like database password that you don't want to expose to the others so next I have defined another file that contains a snippet of code responsible for creating the public and the private subnets and also the internet gateway the NAT gateway and the public road table and the private road table and here I have assigned my two public subnets to my public road table and my two private subnets to my private road table finally I have divided a VPC with a set of variables that you can see here so my variables are divided to two parts so I have a global variables and the default variables so the global variables I can override their values at runtime by giving a file with the the, the the values that I want to override at the runtime so when I will run Terraform plane and Terraform apply command I will give this file as a parameter to my commands and then these values will be will override the default values that are set on my variables files so now on terminal will execute Terraform init command so it will install the H3 bucket and then it will configure the AWS provider next I will type Terraform plane so as you can see here it will ask me for my for my values for, for the global variables so for the global variables if you remember I didn't specify their values therefore here I will rerun Terraform plane command but this time I will give it my variables file
So now QR phone will track the changes and it will tell me that it will create 14 resources. So as you can see here, it will create a VPC, two public subnets, two private subnets, and all the security stuff. So now we will apply these changes by typing Terraform apply command. And I will confirm this by typing yes. So now Terraform will create the resources. So while Terraform is creating the resources, let me go back to my AWS console. So here, if I jump to VPC section and click on my VPCs, as you can see, Terraform has created a VPC called a demo and also it created two public and two private subnets. It created a public root table and it associated the two public subnets to this root table. So, so far, the private subnet was not created yet. And I think it already created the internet gateway. And if you remember, I have specified a backend, which is an history bucket to store my state file. So here Terraform will generate the state file. So if I refresh this S3 bucket, at the end of this process, Terraform will store the state file on this packet. So let's give it a few seconds to terminate creating all the necessary resources. So now Terraform has finished creating the resources so as you can see here it displayed the private subnets and public subnets ids and also the vpc id and to display this information i have created an output file and here i told terraform to output the vpc id based on the vpc resource name and the same goes for the public and private subnets resources so now if I go back to the SU bucket and I refresh this page, I should have a folder called VPC and on this folder I have my Terraform state file. So now instead of Terraform creating and generating the file uh, locally, it will store this file on this encrypted bucket. Here if we go back to the root tables, as you can see here we have the private and the public root table. So now our VPC has been created and it's ready to use. So we can create an EC2 instance on one of the private subnets. So I have created a new file with a new resource of type EC2 instance with the following properties. So for the machine image, I have used the official Amazon Linux AMI and I use it at T2 micro as the instance type. Finally, I have defined a key pair to SSH to my server later on. Also, I have assigned a new security group to my server, which allows all outbound traffic and traffic and inbound traffic on port 22 from anywhere. So once again, if I type Terraform apply and I give it as a parameter, the variable file, Terraform will detect the changes and will ask me if I want to create a new EC2 instance and the security group and the new key pair. So I will apply these changes by typing yes and Terraform will create the necessary resources. So it will take a few seconds to create all the needed resources. Meanwhile, if we go to the back to my EC2 dashboard, As you can see, my instance has been created. So I'm just gonna give it a few seconds until the instance state is changed to, to running. So as you can see now, my three resources has been created. Now, if I refresh this page, as you can see, my instance has a private IP address. Therefore, I won't be able to SSH onto the server without using a VPN connection or a bastion host. That's, uh, that's why we create a bastion host or a jump box to 
to be able to SSH to our private instances. So a bastion host is a sample instance deployed on a public subnet. It will be used as a bridge to SSH to instances on the private subnets. Here for the resiliency, I will deploy the instance inside an auto-scaling group with a minimum of one instance at any time. This AHG will be deployed in two availability zones to support immediate access across the VPC and withstand an easy failure. Also, I will deploy a load balancer in front of the auto-scaling group, which will be reachable via a permanent DNS entry configured with route 53. Moreover, instead of using a basic AMI to create my Bastion host, we will see how we can customize the AMI, for example, to install a data collector to collect resource usages like the CPU, the memory, and disk usage of our Bastion host to create a centralized monitoring system. One way of doing this is by using configuration management tools like Salt or Ansible to provision the server at runtime or even a sample shell script but the proper way is to build your own good image with all the necessary dependency and security patches that's why we will use Paker so Paker is an open source tool written in Go it's used to create immutable infrastructure so basically if you have used Docker before you should be familiar with this concept as every time you change your source code, you need to build a new Docker image. So you always start from scratch. So the same pattern will be applied when manipulating machine images. So every time you want to update or install a new tool or a dependency, you will create a new machine image. So Baker makes this process easier as it supports multiple platforms. So on this demo, I will show you how we will use Baker to create AMI for HCI-CD component. So we will start with the Bastion host. So basically Baker will create a temporary instance from the Amazon Linux AMI. Then it will provision the instance with a sample shell script to install the metric collector agent. Finally, it will create a snapshot or an image from the running instance. This image will be our gold AMI that we will use with Terraform to create our Bastion machine. So now you know how Baker works, let me show you the template file. So I already installed Baker in advance, so it's similar to Terraform. It's a single binary that you need to download and unzip and give the execution permission to it. Once done, you need to write a template file in a JSON or a YAML format as the following. So the, def the template file is divided to three sections. So here we have the variable sections, the builder section, and the provisioner section. So in the variables section, you can define your own variable. And the builder section, as I said, Baker support multiple platform. So for this example, I will create an AMI for Amazon. That's why I have specified a builder of type Amazon hyphen EBS. Then I set the region in which I want to build my AMI. This region reference the variable region. Also, I set the instance type that will be created for our temporary instance and the source AMI. So for the source AMI, we will be use the official Amazon Linux AMI. And also I have defined the, the name of the output AMI. So the AMI that will be created will be called Bastion. And finally, for the provisional part, so here, to make it simple, I have used only a sample shell script, but Baker support multiple provisionals like Ansible, Salt, and chaff etc so the shell script it's quite straightforward so it will just install telegraph so for people who are not familiar with telegraph it's an open source tool that can be used as an agent so it supports multiple data sources so it can collect metrics from servers from network devices or even from applications 
here I configured telegraph with a configuration file so on this configuration file I told telegraph to collect metric about the CPU the disk and the network usage and memory usage of my machine and then store this metric to a time series database so for this example I have used M3DB as a time series database so if you are not familiar with M3DB or telegraph I will be explaining this in depth on the upcoming videos so now our template is defined we can go to the terminal and start and start creating and building our AMI so on terminal type paper validate and the name of the template file to validate the syntax so as you can see the syntax is correct so now we can issue paper build and the name of the template file to build our AMI so paper will create a new AC2 instance based on the Amazon Linux AMI so now if we can go back to the AWS management console and go to EC2 instances as you can see Baker has launched a temporary instance so Baker we create a temporary instance and it will provision this instance with our shell script to install telegraph as you can see here it's installing the data collector agent so once the agent is installed Baker will create a snapshot or an image from this running instance so Baker is still creating the AMI so I think by now the AMI should be created so if we go back to the AWS management console and navigate to the AMI's sections we can have our AMI so now we have our bastion AMI so now we can create our bastion host based on this AMI with Terraform so as seen on the previous diagram I have defined an auto scaling group with a minimum of one instance at any time this auto scaling group will be using a launch configuration which describes the configuration of the instances to be created in our case it will be an instance based on the Bastion AMI that we created with Baker. I have also defined a load balancer that will be sitting in front of the auto scaling group and I will create a DNS entry in route 53 with a user friendly URL to access to my Bastion server. So once again if we type Terraform apply on the terminal session and give it the variables file Terraform will track the, the changes and it will ask me if I want to create an auto scaling group and a load balancer and a new root a new record and root 53. So I will apply the changes by typing yes and Terraform will create the necessary resources. So once again it will take few seconds to create everything. So Terraform has finished creating the resources and it will display the Bastion DNS URL on the output section. So let's verify that Terraform has created, has created our Bastion house. So once again, I will go to the EC2 management console. So as you can see here, we have our Bastion house, which has a public IP address. So therefore we will be able to SSH to this server but in this example I won't be using the public IP address but I will use the DNS entry that we created on route 53 so I will copy this URL and if I type SSH the username which is ec2-user at the URL of my server that I created on route 53 I should be able to SSH to my server. So now we can create an SSH tunnel using the DNS record to our private instance by using the following command. So now if I create a new tab on SSH and 
specify the port forwarding I should be able to SSH to my private instance so this is guys how you can create your bastion house to SSH to your private, private instances so in this video we have seen how we can use infrastructure as good tools like Baker and Terraform to create your own VPC from scratch so in the upcoming video will be our Jenkins cluster on this VPC so till then have a great day